So let's go ahead and make a synth and apply these things. I'm going to show you the panel view and the structure view, and we're going to build a basic synthesizer. All right, so I'm going to open up Reactor here. The way I like to open Reactor, um, this is just a total Mac thing. Uh, I like opening applications by hitting Command, Space Bar, and then just typing React. Because nothing is spelled like Reactor. They like Ks a lot. Like anything that has a C, they usually throw a K in. I've sensed a theme there. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> part of the branding, maybe? It is part of the branding. All right, so this is our view in Reactor when we don't have anything open. On the left-hand side, we have an inspector where we can go and look through our libraries and things. And then we have a snapshot view. If we had a synth open, we'd be able to select presets within that synth using the snapshot view. So there's a user library, a factor library, and then what they call players, which are special synths made by uh, native instruments to be played by Reactor. Um, but they're called players because you can't really edit them or steal bits from them, um, which is another cool thing about Reactor. If you like a part of a synth, you rip it off and you put it in your synth. Except for the players, of course. We don't do that. All right, so I'm going to make a new synth by going to File and create a new ensemble. So I basically created my room. Here's my studio. What are we going to put in it? Right now, we're in the panel view, which means I'm looking down on top of the synth, and I haven't built anything, so nothing's there. Um, down at the bottom is a little sample area. I'm going to get rid of that by coming up here in the upper right-hand side and selecting the little waveform, and it goes away. So now I've got a lot of real estate, and real estate's very important when you're using Reactor. To get to the structure view, on the left-hand side of the screen, I've got a little picture of a panel and a little picture of the structure view. So I'll click on the structure view. Here's a blank instrument. So they've created an instrument for me. Isn't that nice? If I select the instrument, its properties come up on the left-hand side. Now, the properties are very important. This is where we adjust all of our settings for whatever we have selected in the structure view. So under function, it's a four-voice synth. Well, I've got more than four fingers. So I'm going to put that up to, I don't know, 24? Now, you've got to be careful, because the higher that number is, um, the more it's going to hit your CPU. Okay. Under that, we have some other settings like um, Unison, where it copies the sound and slightly detunes it, making it sound more rich. Um, we also have some voice allocation stuff, which is basically how does it steal voices when I use more than 24 fingers? Um, well, I don't have 24 fingers, so I should be all right. But these are all specific to instruments. Uh, you don't find these in macros or in modules. So to get inside of this instrument, I'm going to double click on it. That's how you go deeper into anything, whether it's a macro or an instrument, inside of the reactor structure view. I can see that my instrument also is hooked up to two audio outputs and two audio inputs. Now, audio input, why would I want that in a synth? Well, if I had a vocoder, I might be able to use my voice and have it trigger something within the synth. That might be cool. But um, I'm going to double click on this instrument to get inside of it. Now, as we see, the ports on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are mimicking the ports on the instrument. Actually, they're defining the ports on the instrument. So if I double-click on the instrument, here are my imports and my outports. How about I get rid of the input ports? I'm not going to use them. Boom. See, they don't exist anymore. Now, how did I navigate between the different layers of Reactor? This is important as well. Double-click on the instrument. And I'm inside the instrument. Double click on the background, I'm looking at the instrument. Double click again, I'm looking at the panel. OK? So that's how we can start navigating inside of the instrument. All right, so here's my output. Now I need to create stuff. So we're going to create the three main components of a synthesizer. The three main components of a synthesizer are the oscillator, the filter, and the amp on most subtractive synthesizers. OK? I could make it more broad and say, like, all synths are most most synths, but then we start talking about additive synthesis and FM synthesis, and it starts to, you know, they don't have filters because you can, like, create any, any you know, tone you want. So, but I'm going to just say in general, subtractive synthesis is really, really popular. It's the one that uh, most people really get a kick out of. So, oscillator, filter, and amp. So, to give myself a module, this is building the building blocks of our synth, I'm going to control click and go to built-in module oscillator and choose a sawtooth wave. A sawtooth wave has very rich harmonic content. So I'm choosing it because when I put a filter on it, it's going to react very well to the filter. 
So I'm going to right click built in module, go to filter, and I'll choose multi low pass four pole filter. And finally, built in module, signal path, stereo amp mixer. So there are the three main components of the synth. Now I need to hook these things up so they actually work. So I'll take the output left, output right. Now, here's the thing, my filter has six outputs on it. So normally if you have a synth, you would be able to pick which filter you want, right? And anytime I think about I'm going to pick something on the front panel of my synth, I think of it being a panel module. So a knob, I'd find that under panel, a button under panel. So I'll right click, built in module, panel, and I'll choose a switch. Now the switch, in order to get enough ports, we only have one port on there, and that doesn't make much of a switch. So I go over to my properties, and I will give it six ports. And then I hook these in, you just click and drag. And take our output of the switch and go into the stereo mixer. Now one thing that's really neat, if I control click on any of these ports, I have level and pan and usually I want a slider, you know, or a slider for level and maybe a knob for panning. If you control click, you have the ability to control, uh, to create a control or a constant. A control is going to be something like a knob, it's something that's variable. A constant is a number. So I'm going to create a control. There's level, and here's panning. Now the switch here, I'm going to need to name the ports on the switch. And yes, this takes a little bit of time because working in Reactor takes a little bit of time, at least in the beginning. And I'll explain that in a minute. All right, so we're looking pretty good so far. Now you notice that there's a, these yellow lights. That tells me that things are hooked in correctly. Um, right now, my four pole filter is not hooked in correctly. That's kind of a mystery because I have everything plugged in. Why isn't it working? Well, it's because my switch doesn't have a setting. It's just, it sees the ports, but I haven't selected anything on my switch yet. So I'll just jump over to my panel and, oh, uh, yeah, the panel's getting cluttered. This is something you have to be mindful of when you're creating synths in Reactor. Every time you create a knob or a panel thing, it stack, they st all stack up in the upper left-hand corner. So you want to turn this little wrench on. And organize stuff. So I'll choose low pass four. I have to have the wrench on, off to be able to get those settings, okay? So go back into the structure view. Hey, look, my filter's on, yay. All right, take my oscillator output, go into the filter. Now I talked in the, uh, when we were talking on the keynote, we were talking about logarithmic pitch and on an oscillator that makes sense, but on the filter we also see a pitch input. It's a, a little bit of a misnomer. I mean, I understand where they're coming from because you use the same values as pitch on an oscillator, but it's really your filter cutoff. On the filter we're gonna have the ability to control cutoff and resonance. I usually like to think in threes. So like we have three main components of the synth, oscillator, filter, amplifier. We have parameters that we can choose. So in an oscillator, you usually choose the type of wave, you have tuning, and the ability sometimes to do phasing, which is where the waveform starts. Does it start at zero or does it start anywhere except zero? That would be phase. If we're in the filter, it's the type of filter, cutoff and resonance. And then when we get to the amplifier, it's going to be level, panning, maybe some kind of special effect. Now on the oscillator, I need to tell, the oscillator is making sound all the time. A lot of people think that when you hit the key on the keyboard, you tell the oscillator to play, but um, that's not what's happening. The oscillator is always making sound, 
and it has a gate on the back end of it, and we tell that gate to open or close. So to do that, I actually need to tell Reactor to listen to this keyboard that I have set up here. So to do that, control click, built-in module, MIDI in. So that means MIDI coming in from the outside world. Gate. Control click again, built-in module, and MIDI in, and note pitch. So I attach my note pitch, I attach my gate, and you'll note that any of the modules that are, have to do with MIDI coming in from the outside world, there's a little MIDI symbol on the left-hand side of that module. So that's showing us that we're getting input. So theoretically, this synth will play. Now, to be safe, I'm going to go back to my panel view. I'm going to kind of organize it a bit. Pull this over. My filter cut off. Resonance. And before you play a synth, <laughs> when you've built it, you kind of need to look at your settings, because if you're not careful, you might blow your ears out. <laughs> I might get a lot of people uh, you know, yelling in my ear right now, telling me, stop. So I'm going to turn my level down to be safe, and I'll try to play it. And there we go. So that's my first synth in Reactor. Yay! Oscillator filter amp. It's as simple as you can possibly get.